Welcome back, guys. It is another weekend. Uh, yet another weekend working on the trailer project. Josh is back. Yay. Yet again. He keeps sticking around for some reason. Um, so I think where we left off is I had some decking laying down on the trailer. I'm going to go ahead and show you. You kind of see some other parts going on. Uh, so I was able to get some new drill bits and we finished attaching the decking. So the decking looks to be pretty good. I'm liking it so far anyways. Um, you can see I've got some fenders for the tires. I've got my hubs, my new hubs. There's one new tire. Uh, that's all uh, That's all they had in stock at my Menards. There's only one. Somebody came in and bought the other one already. So I gotta wait to get the second one. But here's my new hubs to replace the, uh, the old trailer flange, which is this style because obviously nobody runs that anymore and I don't want to run that either so these new hubs will fit right on these uh, mobile home spindles and come with new bearings and seals and a cap and I just couldn't think of a better way to handle that so that is what I we got going on that's what we're going to start with first is going ahead and getting that swapped out so uh, we're going to go ahead and get started so my uh, trailer hub kit came, like I said earlier, came with new bearings and seals and everything, but obviously the bearings are not packed. And uh, I could do it the old fashioned way, as some of you are familiar, where you basically get a, a mound of grease in your hand and you sit there and basically press the grease in. But I invested in myself and I bought a bearing packer, which is absolutely the way to go. You want to come in close on this, Josh? I'll show you coming close. So it's kind of cone shaped. Uh, so you take the bearing, you point cone down, and it'll somewhat fit into this. And this is also cone shaped. What this does is it actually seals off the inside of the bearing. When you press down, it seals off the outside of the bearing. And so when I actually press down on this, I force grease. Sorry if I'm blocking it. Uh, I actually force grease completely solidly through this bearing. So there's no gaps, there's nothing like that. It's the way to go. Um, I think this one was like 30 bucks, 30, 40 bucks, I don't know. But basically, if you find yourself owning trailers, multiples or servicing vehicles that have serviceable bearings, uh, do yourself a favor, get a bearing packer. Um, Cause what would take me, you know, five minutes to do by hand, I just did in 20 seconds. You really can't beat that kind of efficiency. And if I had gloves on and stuff, I could do this whole job without making a mess. Right now, I'm not too worried because I actually want to get some fresh grease on the spindle. So I kind of purposely made a mess, if that makes sense. So I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. That's kind of a neat tool if you didn't know it existed. It's the way to go. Really no other way to do it in my opinion. So that's about it. Okay guys, so we got the new hub on, went ahead and bolted the new wheel up. Uh, now what we're doing is we're eyeballing for our fender. We had to, to figure out how we were going to mount it. Uh, we needed to space it because our mobile home axle was wider than the trailer. And we didn't feel like widening the whole trailer, so we left you know the side rails alone. So uh, what we did is we took a piece of angle iron, and uh, you can kind of come in closer here Josh and uh, to give us a little bit of spacing, but we needed a good way to attach it to where we also have a good place to weld to our fender. So I did is I made some notches with the uh, angle grinder in three different spots. So now what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to weld around it, top and bottom. Thus, this piece will have plenty of hole. I mean, that fender doesn't weigh very much, but the idea is I don't want it to fracture and crack and then fall off. So that should hopefully be enough surface area or well to prevent it from wanting to crack and fall off. So um, what I want to do next is I want to finish cleaning this up so I can go ahead and lay my welds in. We'll weld that piece on and then we will hold the fender up and probably go ahead and tack it on as well. So uh, that is what we're going to be working on next. Okay, we 
have an update for you guys. Josh, back up a little bit. Fender's mounted. Uh, that actually worked out pretty well, our little piece here. We got it welded on and I welded my fender onto that piece. Uh, it's welded, not only is it welded on the top, welded on the bottom, and I've got it welded uh, where that fender meets the end line there. So it's decently solid. I'm not really worried about it at this point, being able to come off going down the road. The only weight this will ever see is the weight of the fender itself. You know, nobody should be using this as a step or anything like that in a, in a perfect world, I guess. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, I don't think it would hold up to me stepping on it, but maybe something a little smaller than me it would. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. You want to get a wide shot looking at the tire and the fender? Yeah, might as well. So, uh, obviously we have to put a little bit of a gap uh, because as, as the suspension comes loaded, I don't want the tire coming in and bouncing it busting my fender off, so that's why uh, there's a bit of a gap. Basically the whole point of this is to prevent this from shooting rocks at cars behind it, uh, as well as if this were to ever blow out, hopefully keep rubber from shrapneling everywhere um, as trailer tires, trailer tires typically do. So uh, we're pretty happy with the way this turned out. We will have to pull this tire back off so we can finish painting it. Uh, we're, we're gonna to wait to do the other side until we get the other tire, uh, unfortunately. Uh, due to the fact that we only had one, we, we kind of want to be able to eyeball it to make sure. I could copy my measurements, and we will basically do that, but um, this is the absolute best way, obviously, is to make sure it's gonna fit, is, is to have the, the new tire and hub mounted on there. So uh, I am, I'm really liking the looks of this trailer so far. It's coming along nicely. Uh, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and fabricate the other hinge. That's gonna go on the other side for my gate. Uh, exactly, I'm gonna do exactly the way I did with this one, just on the other side there. So we're gonna go ahead and get that knocked out and then we will figure out what we're gonna do from there. is uh, actually here in a few minutes. We're gonna take it for its maiden voyage, uh, just down the road and back. I still haven't got the plate for it yet, so it's not technically legal, uh, but we do wanna see how she pulls, things like that. So we're just gonna run her up and down the road real quick.
How does she feel? It's a Duramax, man. I don't feel it. <laughs> More things that look like it's tracking straight, things like that, you know. Some things like axle alignment, if you don't, if they're not so bad, you don't notice them right off the bat, you really won't notice it until your tires start wearing. So unfortunately some of that will be a, a wait and see kind of thing to see if you start getting some funky tire wear. Just remember guys, if VV breaks, it was because Josh didn't weld it right. Josh didn't <laughs> make it right. Obviously, if you keep something on it, tongue weight wouldn't be an issue because we'll load it up at the front. But we may have to do like a toolbox or something up front and just keep some supplies and stuff in it just to, because you got all that weight on the back side of the axle. I think that's what I was feeling when I was backing up. Actually, it was just it wanting that as the axle tube because this one's got a damn spacer in it too. You get a little extra play because it's a two and whatever inch receiver instead of just a two inch receiver like on like half ton vehicles. But with tongue weight holding that down, I don't think that'll be an issue. So something to think about. We either need to add weight to the front of the trailer on purpose, uh, or we need to do like a toolbox or something and maybe we do just stick a brake in it, you know, if there's not much in there. Just don't want anything dumb to happen because there's no tongue weight because we got that big metal gate I built hanging off the very back. Uh, all that channel is basically from the axle back. These are things I didn't really think about before, uh, but now that I'm seeing it in use, I think would have benefited us. So, no, something to keep in mind. Alright, guys, we are going to roll on some paint on a plywood top to help it last a little longer. We just got some black implement paint for no really particular reason, except it was right near the spray paint that we were picking up. 